Enzymes. Enzymes are also known as biological catalysts. This means that they speed up reactions inside our body and in our cells without being used up. Now an enzyme is basically a protein with a 3D shape. And the most important part of its 3D shape is this area, also known as the active site. This is where substrate or reactants will come and bind to in order to be turned into products. Now the active site has a specific shape, which means the shape of the substrate has to be complementary to it. Just like every lock has a complementary key. So sometimes in an exam they can ask you to explain the lock and key model, which is basically saying that every substrate is complementary to a specific active site. Now this shape of the active site can be affected by changes in temperature or pH. And if these two change, that means the speed of the enzyme can also be affected. So let's see how temperature and pH affect the speed of an enzyme. Let's start with temperature. So on the x-axis, we have temperature, starting from low going to high, and on the y-axis we have the speed or rate of reaction. So, when temperature is low, the enzyme is going to be moving very slowly because it does not have a lot of kinetic energy. As we increase the temperature, the enzyme gains kinetic energy and collides more frequently with the substrate until it gets to an optimum temperature. This is a temperature where the enzyme is able to work at its fastest rate. And at this temperature, we have the most collisions per second. Now, if you try to push it beyond its optimum temperature, then the bonds which hold the enzyme will start to break. And eventually, the shape of the active site will be permanently changed, which means the substrate can no longer fit into the active site and there'll be no more reactions. At this point, we say that the enzyme has been denatured. Okay, let's look at pH. Now every enzyme has an optimum pH, the pH where it works best at. At the optimum pH, the enzyme can react with the most number of substrates per second. Now, if we begin to increase or decrease the pH in both directions, then the speed starts to slow down because changes in pH will affect the shape of the enzyme. If we keep on increasing or decreasing the pH, this means the shape will have changed so much that the active site can no longer bind to the substrate. Eventually, no substrates will be able to bind and the rate of reaction falls to zero. So, the enzyme has been denatured. Okay, so to compare those two side by side. Now, here's a very important point. Okay, if we look at the one on the left, the temperature one, it almost looks like a roller coaster. The temperature starts to gradually go up and then suddenly falls down. On the right, we have pH. The pH curve looks like a bell. So, we have an optimum and then both sides start to go down. Okay, if you look at the temperature one once again, on the left, here it's slow, not because it's been denatured, but because it's cold. However, over here, it's been denatured. With pH, it's been denatured on both sides, because the pH is either too high or too low. So remember, so a temperature, one side it's slow because the enzyme doesn't have enough kinetic energy and then on the other side it's been denatured. With pH, both sides have been denatured. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com 
where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.